Welcome to Real Black Consciousness Forum Podcast. Thanks for listening and remember to like, share, and comment on the content. Hit that notification tab, so you will know when new content has been uploaded. And now your host, Big VJ. Welcome back to the podcast. Beloved, this is indeed your brother Big VJ checking in. Let's read an article. Right, how about we read an article from Fox 9 out of the Midwest, Minneapolis, the home of our great late brother Prince, right? Peace be upon him, he's no longer here. And the headline reads, Man shoots woman performing oral sex, right? Sodomy. Admits to murdering someone to father charges, right? So yeah, let's let's have a conversation about this, right? Let's uh, dig into this article. Let's see what it's all about. Uh, we're going to have a conversation about sexuality. We may talk a little bit about sex drive. Uh, we kind of just did that, though, right? If you haven't done so already, uh, check out the last conversation that we produced, that we released, in which we talked about how as a young man as a young prince as a young soldier you get your sexual drive from your father right or should i say your sexual the border of your sexual drive you get that from your father right because we know for it to be a sex drive that means you got to be able to operate it and manage it so you're the skipper uh you're the pilot you know <laughs> You're behind the wheel, you know what I mean? You just can't jump behind the wheel and just take your sex drive all over the country and you know what I'm saying? You gotta have <laughs> you gotta have regulation, you know what I'm saying? You can't just be driving and you're all up on the sidewalk and you're riding through the public park all on the grass and no, no, somebody have to provide for you regulation. And that someone as a son is your father, right? Sexuality is something different because a father cannot regulate or provide a border for your sexuality. Sexuality is something that each individual person has. And it is a collective of experiences that a person have. And whatever is the most enjoyable, right? The most pleasurable, that's what the person goes with as far as sexuality. But the drive is different. So we, we already talked about how the drive works. Uh, we're going to have a conversation today about sexuality, right? So let's go back to the headline. It reads, man shoots woman performing oral sex. The first paragraph says, a man has been charged with murder after killing a woman who allegedly made him feel suspicious while performing oral sex, according to charges. DK Bible 25 of Minneapolis is charged with second degree murder after the daily shooting near Lake Street early Tuesday morning. Uh, we're going to skip this paragraph. Boom. So we're going on one, two, three. We're going to go down to the fourth one, right? Speaking with authorities, Bible initially claimed he was not involved in the shooting, but later admitted that he was once shown the video footage gathered by investigators. He then admitted to shooting the victim, saying she made him feel suspicious while performing oral sex. Right? So we notice this term suspicious keep popping up. Let's do one more paragraph. Maybe two. After the sex was complete, Bible said he continued to feel suspicious, so he shot her. Gunshot residue was located on her sweatshirt hood, according to police, and he admitted to shooting her from quote-unquote inches away. As they would say, point blank range, right there in the front. Once arrested, Bible was given a phone call to make calls to his parents, during which he told his dad that he just quote unquote murdered someone. Now we know he is on the jail phone. So it ain't nothing private. Whatever you say, them folks can hear it, right? Let's continue. And while he's talking to his dad, let's back up a little bit. 
he said he quote just married uh, just murdered someone and that he quote knew he wasn't god but he had to do it all right let's stop and let's have a conversation about that this is uh we're going to talk a little bit about sexuality but before we do that let's talk about this right if you do a little bit more digging you will see that the reason why the young man dk bible 25 felt suspicious or suspect right he's really feeling suspect about his sexual encounter with this person is because this person was a transgender right the person who lost their life name is savannah ryan williams and um savannah was born a male uh went through a transition and became a female right um but you can kind of see through the pictures that you know this person was it was this person was a male so how does a 25 year old get roped up into engaging and entertaining a transgender right and just kind of like feeling weird about it and this and that so what is you what do you think um a 25 year old person first introduction because they was engaging in oral sex right so what do you think these young men uh first come in contact with what oral sex is and you know uh what is possibly a transgender and this and that in the sexual aspect what do you think they learn that at they learn it from porn right Porn does something very tricky. And it all kind of like depends on the person that is watching it, personal experience, right? What they've been what they got going on in their life, right? Um if you are dealing with uh let me say it, let me say it, if you're dealing with some hidden issues. Let me say it that way, right? And you begin to watch pornography. It may trigger something in you that it doesn't trigger in the normal watcher. Because, see, the way pornography is set up that the devil is pushing and he has made it easy accessible for the public to get hold on to what they call hardcore pornography. It's not the solo acts. They don't push the solo acts when the sister is just sitting in the bed by herself. You dig what I'm saying? They're pushing hardcore acts. And how the hardcore act work is that you got to see dick now to see penetration. You know what I mean? They, this shit go hand in hand. If you got something else going on with you, you dig, and you start watching porn, your attention could shift and it may not be on the shorty that's getting pounded out. It may shift to something else because you got something that's going on with, within you. So to play it all safe, you can't even be a partaker of the devil's pornography system. Because he's a scientific deceiver. He's working a hustle. You dig what I mean? Um, young men, by nature, you know, we're not comfortable looking at dicks. You dig what I'm saying? From a, from a child coming all the way up. You just ain't comfortable like it just doesn't work that way you it's a it's a uh, whether you play little league basketball football you know any sport you just have regular gym you had to go to the showers just by nature you ain't you're not comfortable you're not going to look at no man's dick you just that's not your focus pornography is a hustle where they made it comfortable for men to look at other men dick on the slot because you're addicted to the hardcore porn. You can't look at shorty by herself and then she just say, damn, she bad. And you, nah, these niggas like to look at penetration. So they they selling you, the devil is selling you kind of like something else. You dig what I mean? And if you kind of going through some challenges already and you're looking at this kind of shit, it eventually, eventually leads you here because when you start hearing about the act of sodomy and oral sex, that's not our culture's thing. That is a That's something that's been dumped on us by... Wicked small hats and guineas through 
the pornography business that they created, right? That's on Mr. Bible side. Then you got the other side where you're dealing with Savannah Williams, the, the person that lost their life, right? Who is kind of like dealing with, uh, I would call it a uh, John Moneyism, right? Because John Money is the devil back in 1955 that came up with the whole the gender thing the whole because back in my generation it wasn't called uh transgender they were called transvestites and at this time the 80s and 90s you could you couldn't even find it we're talking about minneapolis so it's kind of like widespread now it was almost impossible to find a transvestite in the midwest back in those days there was only like a there was only like two or three cities you had to go to to be a partaker in dealing with a person that's a transvestite. New York City is one. You had to go down to New Orleans, that's two. Or you had to go to Frisco. Now, through the art and the power and the might of the federal government, through Barry. Because we you don't really notice this stuff until Barry get in office. We're talking about a uh, buddy that just got off that giraffe and fighting them hyenas from Africa. He came over. He sat in the biggest seat in the land. Right? We're talking about Obama. And after Obama get in there, all of a sudden, you know, you see what a activity looks like when you put the full weight of the federal government behind it. That's the LGBT movement. Barry did that. He got right off the giraffe and he did that. His wife did it. Shit, I mean, goddamn, they made it. They brought it into our households. When you see Michelle sitting up with nephew, uh, Dwayne Wade's son, and they sitting up there. I mean, you would think to damn, all the great things that our young people do at our village. The inventions, being part of the engineering teams or sports teams. And no, nah, they don't get a chance to talk to the first lady. They don't get a chance to talk to the first lady, and get on national television. But they poor nephew. Who dressed like a female and you know he's a little confused and then they put him up there and he can meet the first lady and get on primetime television and go into the house of millions now just just think about the wicked laws in this nation right because i could remember time it was a time beloved that individual cities from baltimore from mobile to New Orleans, Baton Rouge, back up to Detroit, Chicago, Louisville. You know, each individual city was contemplating putting like um, laws in, in place to say that, like sagging laws. Like if, you're, if your underwear is, is showing, it's indecent, you may get a ticket, right? All these inner cities was kind of trying to cook that up at one time. You know, I don't know if they still went through it. Some cities did, some didn't. But all these inner cities, Memphis, everybody, where our people is at, they were trying to make city laws about how sagging can, you can get a ticket for having your pants so low that your drawers is exposed. You can see your underwear, it's in problem. Okay, now let me show you how to, the mind of the devil. If a young brother could get a ticket, because I remember everybody thought it was against that. You know, every city that was talking about they're going to do that, then it was some pushback and that went away. All the cities that thought about doing it, we don't hear nothing about them doing it, but it came and it came up, right? But just think though, let's just think. I want you guys to walk with me, right? We'll figure it out. To put a law in place about a person sagging, a young brother, a man, a male, sagging his pants, his underwear is showing. They say that's indecent exposure because we can see his undergarments, right? Okay. But in the same breath, if that brother get a ticket for sagging, if he went home, right? Because he hanging out downtown in one of these cities and he's sagging, he get a ticket. If he would have went home and put on a fucking dress with makeup on and came right back out, he's proper all of a sudden. This is how you know Brother, you living in the heart of the Romans now. Because this is their culture. It's okay to put the dress on. That's not improper. You don't get no ticket for that. You know, nobody says anything about that. But if you're sagging, this is improper. You deserve it. This is the mind. This is this is what happened when you live underneath Roman and Greek rule. Because this whole 
uh, put some different clothes, this cross dressing shit. All, all of this is Roman and Greek culture. This is not our culture. This is a culture that's been pushed on us. This is a culture of, of John Money, who we talked about him on this podcast. What is it, a year and a half ago? Two years? This is the guy from 1955. He's a quote unquote sexologist. We're talking about John Money. And he changed the term gender to what we see today. Because gender used to just mean male or female. And, and he talked about, no, it's a human characteristic. You know, he he played the brain game. He was out of John Hopkins University. So he played the brain. And then he went even further. And he played, we talked about David Reamer, right? About he did the first sexual reassignment surgery. Because he, all of this shit is documented. We talked about this. But just to be able to see the push that they're pushing, that man, it's deep in the mid. This is why I come this story caught my attention. This is a, a transgender issue, and we, it's unfortunate that the person lost their life. You know what I mean? Because that is something we ain't, we ain't with that shit. You dig what I mean? The fact that this activity, they're working at one city at a time. You can see what something looks like when it has the full weight of the federal government behind it and it started small it started as a small budding thing in 1966 where david reamner they fucked up his uh, circumcision they didn't do it right they fucked his dick up and then john money comes in right the guy from john hopkins he comes in and he kind of like uh he coerced the parents he, he David's parents into getting reassignment surgery. He kind of, instead of him just saying, the hospital fucked up, we're going to make a settlement and give you guys some millions and we're going to call it good. He did some other shit. This was the perfect opportunity to do his rollout plan. And once he rolled it out on the medical side, they're perfecting on it. And then they get Barry, right, to get off that giraffe. And then he pushed it on the federal side. And now you got what you got today. There is a concerted effort to keep our numbers down. It is a concerted effort to keep our numbers down. The devil can clearly see that the fastest growing race currently on the planet is our yellow brothers, the Asian man right right behind him is no other than the original man the devil number is falling or should i say his numbers are falling so to stay in power a little bit longer he's putting things out to stop reproduction which is ultimately going to affect us the most because oh beloved we got the most damaged households that we're going to fall victim to we just whatever is is a we in bad shape we just said that way we're gonna leave it there beloved we're gonna leave it there i want to keep my eye on the story though you dig because man you know i'm like this shit is way in minneapolis you know what i mean i'm like okay i want to see how this play out you dig it i mean i want to see how this play out and i also want to see like it, it's just it's just it is almost like watching a movie to me you can see like to see something, an activity that never was, right? Because I want, I want you to, beloved, I want you to follow me real quick. To see an activity that never was, and then it turns into an activity that becomes normal, you can see the scientific deceiver working behind the scenes to make it all happen. From the Bruce Jenner thing, Bruce Jenner comes out, you know what I'm saying, an athlete. He comes out, he goes behind closed doors. They sold some bean bags in his chest. He played woman. He, you know, he, he played the greatest woman ever. And you can see it. It's like a step by step by step. And it gets a little kind of like, damn, you get to see the mind of the devil, how they're rolling out a plan. It starts with John Money. And then they're rolling out a plan and they have like 
there's people in place to help this agenda roll out, roll out, roll out, roll out, roll out. And eventually we know because of our placement in this country, the plan is this plan going to roll out to a roll of us. And that's where, beloved, we have to stay on guard. Peace and black power to your family. Man, beloved, I thank you guys so much for listening. I thank you guys for hanging out. This is indeed Real Black Content the Forum Podcast. I am your brother V. I'm going to get it with you guys later. Peace. American popular culture is steadily being inundated with pro-LGBTQ messages. Marvel is pushing an on-screen same-sex kiss in a movie out next fall. HGTV has announced it plans to feature a thruple in its House Hunter series. That show will feature a married man and a woman who have two kids and are in a relationship with another woman who lives with them. And then there's AOC. The New York Congresswoman recently pledged allegiance to the drag on RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars show. I'm Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and I pledge allegiance to the drag. Thanks for listening. Remember to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Google, Anchor, Spotify, and Facebook. Also, don't forget to like, share, and comment on the podcast. Your opinion of what you just heard is important to the platform. So yes, beloved, your comments are the engine and fuel to the machine. Stay blessed and have a powerful day.